Things have taken a turn in the One Piece manga, which by the way, we will be talking about the manga, so there will be spoilers. But in One Piece chapter 1013, Luffy once again lost to Kaido, getting clapped off of Onigashima. And honestly, this makes the story much more exciting. The stakes have been taken to another level. There's a strong sense of urgency. And while Luffy is definitely gonna bounce back from this because that's what he does best, rubber always bounces back. But what exactly does this mean for the rest of the Straw Hats? Is Kaido just gonna go back into action and just demolish everything? everybody? How are the rest of the Straw Hats going to react to Luffy losing? And how is this going to affect some of the Wano matchups that have already been set up? What's good everybody? My name is Zach. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing a prediction video specifically focused on what's to come for the Straw Hats. But first off, the King Pirates crew is now over 32,400 members. If you are new to the crew, make sure to say hi in the comments. And for those of you that missed my community post or my comment on my last video, I did recently get hit with some copyright strikes. That's why six of my most recent videos right now are currently unavailable. I'm still working on trying to get it resolved. Hopefully we'll get it done soon. But in the meantime, it does look like YouTube is suppressing my video impressions. So if you're not yet part of the crew, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell as well so you don't miss an upload. But let's get into this video. Of course, last chapter, we get this wake up call where Luffy loses once again to Kaido, despite improving his armament hockey, learning how to coat his attacks with Conqueror's hockey. None of it matters and he just loses to Kaido once again. But honestly, this was kind of expected because Oda usually likes to have Luffy lose once to the villain to kind of hype up the villain. Usually Luffy just loses once before losing, but sometimes like the case with Crocodile, he loses twice just to really hammer home how strong the villain is. So honestly, I'm really excited for what's next. This really hypes up Kaido as a villain. And with Luffy now out of the picture, Kaido's definitely gonna get some of that spotlight. And that's really the first question I have is what exactly is Oda gonna have Kaido do next? Because realistically, Kaido could go back into action and just tear through through everybody. Based off of Kaido's dialogue in the last chapter where he's talking about the missed opportunity of getting Luffy's head because now the Alliance will still have that belief within Luffy and not give up. I think based off of that at the very least we'll see Kaido go back down and announce to the Alliance that he's defeated Luffy. He might not actually jump into action and just wipe everybody out but he's gonna deliver that blow to their morale. Like most likely he'll probably head down to the live performance floor and Sanji and Zoro will find out that Luffy is lost which will be a pretty big moment for them after they just showcased so much confidence in Luffy a couple chapters ago. But they're not gonna be the only ones that find out about this because there are those Marys. With the Marys, Kaido can transmit his message throughout Onigashima, so pretty much the whole alliance is gonna find out Luffy lost. And honestly, I think next chapter is when this tide is really gonna start turning. So far, things have been pretty good for the alliance. It's really the best they could have hoped for. A lot of the members of the alliance are getting a lot of shine as well. But I think with the defeat of Luffy, now's the time where the beast pirate will really start stepping up. So all the people that's been bagging on King and sleeping on King, I think are gonna be proven wrong. King, I think is gonna step up to the plate and really prove his strength. Hopefully Queen will step up as well and stop being a clown. And I think across the board, we're gonna start seeing things go the Beast Pirates way. Now the first area where I really see this shift happening is the live performance floor. I think that's where Kaido will make his entrance and make the announcement that he's defeated Luffy. And that's really the main area where most of the people are gonna be. So I think the first shift that is gonna happen is King versus Marco. Marco so far has had the upper hand on King and Queen, but it was very evident that it was not sustainable. So I think King and Queen are gonna step up and maybe go into their hybrid forms, and that's where we'll see like Marco on the defensive. Of course, Peril Sparrow is also there so he can interfere and hurt Marco even more. And honestly, it's not impossible that Marco takes some severe damage. I'll probably do a separate video on this, but next chapter is gonna be a really big chapter because it's the end of volume 100. And we've always been talking about this Wano tragedy and this climax of act three it might happen in the next chapter but yeah i do expect marco to start losing his battle once king and queen step up but this also opens the door for sanji and the other scabbers to really come into play now on the other hand zoro is a different story he's also completely out of commission but luckily chopper is also there in that live performance hall so most likely zoro just gets passed off to him and they kind of have to just heal zoro for the time being with sanji and the scabbers on the other hand i do think we're gonna get their matchup set up in the main floor i think once King and Queen really go at it with Marco, it's the perfect opportunity for Sanji to step in and take on one of them. I still think Queen is probably the best option for Sanji, but maybe it's more of a tag 
team of like Sanji and Marco versus King and Queen. Peril Sparrow on the other hand should probably have his hands full once Nekomamushi also shows up. And then you also have Izo and Kawamatsu there who should be doing their own thing as well. So honestly with the main floor, I don't think much changes besides the setup of the matchups. I don't think Sanji and Zoro are really gonna lose their confidence in Luffy after seeing Kaido. They've been with him since the beginning. They're pretty much like our readers. They know the pattern. They know Luffy always bounces back. So honestly, I think they'll just do their best to keep pushing on forward to win this war. And I do think that mentality is gonna kind of apply to all of the Straw Hats, including Jinbei. And honestly, I'm really excited to see what has been going on in that fight between Jinbei versus Who's Who, because it's been a minute since we've seen that. And like, honestly, I really don't think it's a fight that Jinbei should like really struggle super hard with. Who's Who is very mysterious and he's gotten a pretty high portrayal so far. But I think for Jinbei's first official fight as a Straw Hat, he could do better than Who's Who. So I'm very curious to see how exactly Jinbei responds to this situation of Luffy losing. Honestly, I could see a scenario where Jinbei gets really serious and just bodies who's who. And then maybe he's the one to go on the mission of trying to save Luffy. Now that I think about it, if Luffy actually landed in the ocean, Jinbei is really one of the only people that could save him. So that could be one way of really proving Jinbei's value. I still think Luffy probably just landed in Wano, but Jinbei could still go and save him. But honestly, with this Jinbei versus who's who fight, I think it'll be one of the only fights where Jinbei still has the upper hand. But I do still think who's who has a bigger role to play, especially with his mysterious identity. Low-key, I'm starting to like the idea of Jinbei beating who's who and then Brooke somehow taking that fight over. Because with the Robin and Brooke versus Black Maria situation, Brooke does really feel out of place. There's been a clear emphasis on Robin in that fight and I think a lot of people want to see just Robin versus Black Maria. Now it's very possible Brooke does stay in that fight because Black Maria is strong, but I can also see a scenario where Brooke leaves the fight after finding out about Luffy and then eventually somehow taking over for Jinbei, which I feel like would be a much better fight for him individually. For Robin versus Black Maria, on the other hand, I think Black Maria is going to start to turn the tide. Robin got her big moment early on where she slapped up Black Maria, but Black Maria is a Toby Ropo member. She's not going to be an easy fight, so she's definitely going to start to turn the tide, which honestly would be very exciting because the best fights are the most challenging fights. And only in the most challenging situations are you going to bloom and grow your hockey. Similarly, I think Frankie's fight is going to have the same effect. So far, Sasaki hasn't really gotten a good shot into Frankie, whereas Frankie has been very impressive. He dealt a major wound early on to Sasaki, but now I think it's the time for Sasaki to turn the tide. Again, we might see the hybrid forms with these Toby Ropo members. Frankie might start running out of cola. Now, the interesting thing about Frankie is the potential theory that Sasaki is related to Kokoro. I still have strong belief in that theory, whether it turns out Sasaki becomes an ally or he's just a bad son. It's gonna add a lot more layers to that fight that makes it really exciting. But yeah, I definitely think Sasaki is gonna turn it up a notch. Frankie might not have enough cola to keep using the general Frankie. And eventually I think that either leads to a power up for Frankie or Sasaki just turns out to be an ally. But the last two straw hats we have to talk about are Nami and Usopp who are probably in the most unique situation. A lot of people are upset that Page One and Ulti got knocked out by Big Mom and I can understand why. I also really wanted to see those 1v1s for Nami and Usopp, especially after Nami really found her resolve. But I think with Big Mom getting involved, it could be a realistic way to really even out the playing field. For the time being, Page One and Ulti are gonna be down so Nami and Usopp can go and do their own thing with Tama. Now, eventually Tama's gonna have a pretty big moment in turning the tide herself when she gets to the live floor. But because I expect things to start going the Beast Pirates way, I do think Usopp and Nami and Tama are gonna run into some obstacles. It could just be a bunch of Beast Pirates going after them, maybe they run into a number. But I do think this is a chance for the tone to really shift for Nami and Usopp. So far, they've been kind of used as the comedic relief, but once they find out that Luffy is lost, I think they'll get serious. So for them, I think they'll first have to deal with some obstacles like the numbers. That'll kind of be like their tune-up fight before Ulti and Page One get back up. I know Ulti and Page One took a lot of damage, so it might not be realistic they get back up, but I still do really want to see Nami and Usopp get their individual fights. I hope Page One and Ulti are not that nerfed, but at the same time, if they're not, it kind of downplays Big Mom. So I don't really see a perfect way for this to play out, but I do still want to see Nami and Usopp get their individual fights. That's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to support the channel, check out the King Pirates Elite in the description. Otherwise, I got another Straw Hat video for you right there, a playlist for you right there, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.